Well, welcome to um, uh, this webinar. Obviously, you know the person that invited you to hear this not only cares about you, you know, from a, a physical sense, but also uh, from a nutritional standpoint as well. And I have been doing research on uh, oxidative stress, nutrition, and how that plays a role, a significant role in athletic performance at any level. You know, whether you're kind of a weekend warrior all the way up to the lead athlete. I've been lecturing um, to athletes uh, on this subject now for several, several years. And so, um, you know, I, I think as, as athletes, you know, coaches, personal trainers, we're oftentimes, you know, consumed and frankly confused by, you know, the proper amount of carbohydrates and fats and proteins that we need to fuel our bodies for performance. And while that macronutrition is obviously important, um, you know, what is oftentimes forgotten is the important role that fruits and vegetables play uh, and helping to actually preserve your potential for future gains in physical fitness and athletic performance. And specifically, it's the, the micronutrition that you get from fruits and vegetables that has been found to be responsible for uh, reducing what is now considered to be a leading cause of chronic disease and aging, and as you'll see, impaired athletic performance, and that's something called oxidative stress. Now, we need to make a distinction between macronutrition and micronutrition. Okay, macronutrition are the big food groups, you know, the, the proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. And you can think of macronutrition as the gasoline that makes your engine run. You know, we all need to have this to make our bodies function properly, obviously. But distinctly different from macronutrition is the micronutrition that is very unique to fruits and vegetables. And you can think of micronutrition as the oil that makes your engine run smoothly, you know, because you can put gasoline into a car and not change its oil, and that car will run for, you know, quite a while, but eventually, obviously, it will break down. Well, our bodies function in, in kind of a similar process, you know, you can put all the macronutrition in it, uh, but as you'll see um, through some of the research, that if you do not put micronutrients into your engine, your engine also will fail. So, again, we're, we're talking about the distinction between macronutrients and micronutrients, so keep that in mind as we talk uh, throughout this this 30 minutes. Um, so we know that exercise or training leads to performance gains, but the important thing to understand is that while the very oxygen that, that we breathe in is important, um, it can actually act as a double-edged sword. You know, similar to when you uh, cut an apple in half or a banana in half and you leave them exposed to room air, what happens to them? They become brown and oxidized. Well, a similar process is, is you know, occurring in our, inside of our bodies as we breathe in oxygen, and we're kind of in essence, you know, rusting from within. And, and in, in a global sense, that's pretty much what oxidative stress is to our bodies. So roughly at rest, roughly a very small percentage, 2 to 5% of the oxygen that we're breathing in is actually being converted to something called free radicals. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. So free radical production um, and oxidative stress occurs as a function of just our normal daily walking around metabolism. But it's increased quite significantly when we exercise. You know, when you exercise at any level, you know, you can increase your oxygen consumption, which can be some 10 to 20 times above resting state. So again, oxidative stress occurs as a function of our normal daily metabolism, but is significantly increased uh, when we exercise. So what I want to do is take you down to kind of the microphysiology behind energy production, because that's pretty much where about 85 to 90 percent of these free radicals are generated inside of our bodies. And this is obviously you know, just a cartoon depiction of a muscle, kind of like our biceps muscle. And you know, what makes up our muscle are thousands and thousands of these tiny muscle fibers that you see off here to the right. And riding alongside those muscle fibers are these ovoid organelles. These are the cellular mitochondria. This is uh, These are the powerhouses of our body. Okay, This is where energy from the food that you eat combined with the oxygen that you breathe in, goes into making a usable form of energy to make your body run, and that's something called ATP. But the important thing to understand is that this is not an airtight process. You know, not all of the molecules are utilized in the production of energy. And so what happens is that you end up with this spillover effect of these highly charged reactive oxygen species, otherwise known as free radicals. And these free radicals, if they are not effectively neutralized, can very quickly escape from the mitochondria and begin to do damage to our nearby healthy cells. You know, free radicals can attack the lipid membranes that surround cells and tissues inside of our bodies. They can attack the proteins inside of our bodies. These free radicals can attack our genetic material, our DNA. 
And really importantly, as you can see from this diagram, if free radicals are not effectively neutralized, they can actually begin to attack the very mitochondria that formed them. And the reason that's important is because mitochondria do not have the ability to effectively repair themselves from this kind of damage similar to other cells inside of our bodies. And so cumulative damage to your mitochondria will begin to shut down your mitochondria. And that's important, obviously, because you know those are your energy producers and loss of energy production is going to affect you, uh, you know, whether you're just getting up, going to work all the way up to the elite athlete. And a great example of this is what happened to Greg LeMond. And of course, you know, Greg LeMond was the first American to win the Tour de France back in the uh, mid-90s. And he was more or less forced into an early retirement when he developed something called a mitochondrial myopathy. And you know, don't worry about what that is. But what it was was a defective gene that he had inherited from his mother that was actually turned on through all of his years and years and years of, of, of oxidative damage, you know, training, racing, taking in large amounts of oxygen, flipped on this bad gene. And that gene actually began to shut down his mitochondria. And so he was, you know, more or less forced into an early retirement. Now, you know, while this is kind of an exception, a rare exception to this, the, the, the reason I put this up here is that, you know, he didn't know that this was happening inside of his body. You know, you typically don't feel this oxidative stress until something manifests itself in a disease process. And so what I want to do is just point out some areas where oxidative stress plays a role in, in the athlete. And one of the areas is, uh, is in muscle damage. And there's a process called, or a phenomenon called, delayed onset of muscle soreness, or DOMS. And what that is is that, you know, you go out and you, you know, have a heavy training session or you've had a race and the next day you wake up and you don't feel too badly. But as that day progresses, you know, and into the you know two to three, four or five days out, uh, you end up starting to have more muscle pain, more muscle soreness. Well, this delayed onset of muscle soreness is believed to be due in part to continued free radical production at the muscle cellular level, even after you've stopped exercising. So you know you've exercised, um, but just because you have stopped exercising doesn't mean that free radicals are not being produced because they continue to be produced again at a muscle cellular level, resulting. Uh, in part to this delayed onset of muscle pain that many athletes have. And just kind of following up on this, uh, it's been my experience over the years that lots and lots of athletes are really become dependent on taking anti-inflammatory medicine, you know, Motrin, Advil. Uh, but this was a study that was published back in 2007. It was pretty shocking that they have now found that individuals who, you know, use anti-inflammatory medi medication as, you know, adjunctive uh, supplementation to exercising, you know, basically they found that people who use uh, anti-inflammatory medicine, well, those anti-inflammatory medicines also actually increase oxidative stress inside of the body. So, uh, you know, I put this up here because, again, it's, you know, taking anti-inflammatory medicine should not be a part of your training regimen. If you're having muscle pain, there's a reason for it. Uh, and then these anti-inflammatory medicines should just be used sparingly, you know, for typically acute injuries. Okay, another area where oxidative stress plays a role is in the tendon injuries. And tendons are basically the connective tissue between <clears throat> our, um, our bones and our muscle. And it can be the tendons in your shoulder, your elbow, your knees, um, or your Achilles tendon. And if you look at a you know, cartoon depiction of a tendon, a normal healthy tendon is one in which it basically looks like a series of organized cables. And a tendon that has undergone oxidative damage and overuse syndrome kind of looks like, you know, the end of a shoelace kind of fraying. And histopathologically, if you look at it under a microscope, it looks very similar to that. You know, a normal tendon appears very, very organized and striated. And a tendon that has undergone oxidative damage and overuse looks like a you know, disarrayed um, series of, of cables and you know, basically kind of a mess. And this is a, a very interesting study and pretty much an eye-opener. Back in 2008, researchers biopsied the tendons of swimmers, elite swimmers, who are having no shoulder pain at all. And what they found when they looked at their tendons under a microscope is that 70% of those swimmers who are having no pain at all actually had the early stages of oxidative stress um, or oxidative damage to those tendons. So again, you know, if you're already having pain from overuse injuries, this process has probably been going on for quite a while underneath the hood. And that's why 
you know, what we're talking about is protecting ourselves from this kind of damage. And we're going to get into that here in just a little bit. Another area where oxidative stress plays a role is in increased infections. And, you know, if you've had a hard exercise session or you've had a race of some kind, you know, you're at about a 15 to 20 percent increased risk of contracting an upper respiratory infection. And that is because, again, the body takes a bit of a hit. Uh, you know, stress hormones kick in. Uh, they can lower your immune functioning. And again, oxidative stress plays an intimate role uh, in this whole process as well. Oxidative stress also plays a role in, in loss of muscle power. And the basic uh, contractile unit of our muscles is something called a sarcomere. And this study found that the high levels of reactive oxygen species, which are free radicals, actually promote contractile dysfunction, uh, resulting in muscle weakness and fatigue. So they've actually shown that free radicals can attack the basic contractile units of our muscles, basically, again, resulting in a loss of uh, muscle power and function. And, um, you know, because we are talking about oxidative stress, I, I find that athletes think that that just applies to individuals who are running or swimming or playing tennis, but they've also shown that people who do burst activities like weightlifting also have a significant increase in oxidative stress as well. So, you know, this phenomenon applies to anybody at any level of exercise, and it really doesn't matter what you're doing for exercise. And, you know, you still need to be able to protect yourself uh, from this kind of damage. And it, it blows me away because I get asked an awful lot about supplements as I travel around the country lecturing about this subject. And um, I get asked a lot about creatine and is it harmful. Um, and I've been on the fence for this one a long time, but this particular study published in 2012 was very, very uh, eye-opening because they have now found that creatine, um, despite, again, a, causing acute, you know, just intermediate or immediate muscle strength, temporary, uh, is basically harmful because it also induces oxidative stress and decreases your antioxidant capacity. So again, you know, this is, this is something that we need to be paying attention to. Um, and I do not recommend a creatine supplementation at all for any athlete, especially after that particular study. And oxidative stress as it plays a function in damaging our heart muscles. And this was another eye-opening um, study that was published in 2012 where they found that heavy and sustained exercise training can generate large amounts of free radicals, and those free radicals can actually do damage to heart muscle. And this study was, you know, again, published in 2012, was based on an individual who, um, or, or a series of individuals, they found that the ultra marathoners, or people who do, you know, numerous you know, Ironman competitions, or uh, one, you know, marathon after another continuously, um, you know, when they do autopsies on these individuals after they have passed away from whatever reason, they're finding patchy scarring on muscle heart tissue. And that patchy scarring can result in uh, electrical conductivity problems in the heart, you know, resulting in sudden cardiac death. So again, you know, we, you don't feel these kinds of things happening to your body, you know, until something catastrophic happens. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't go out and <clears throat> do you know, Ironman competitions, but there is, again, there's an excess here, and we're beginning to find out that the excesses uh, can do more harm than good. You know, a lot of exercise we're finding out is not healthy for your heart, and again, you know, it's not like you can see this patchy scarring or this damaging going on, or this damage going on. The whole point is, is that if you're going to exercise, and we're going to get into this, you need to be protecting yourself, and that's, that's the next subject. So that does lead us into talking about how to neutralize or minimize oxidative damage as it occurs as a function of this exercise. And of course, the most effective way of neutralizing oxidative stress is through antioxidants. And the important thing is to understand that we all come equipped with, we are all born with this complex internal enzyme cascade that acts as a frontline defense system against you know, free radicals as they're produced on a daily basis. But the important thing to understand, and you'll see through the research coming up, is that even though we're born with and we come equipped with this complex um, antioxidant enzyme cascade, this system can't function by itself. You know, it has to be fortified each and every day. And we fortify this system through our diets, but it's specifically diets that are rich in fruits and vegetables. And specifically the rainbow of colors, you know, the reds, the greens, the purples, the yellows, because inside of those colorful pigments exist these very powerful plant chemicals called phytonutrients. And what I mean by phytonutrients is, you know, it's basically plant-based nutrition. 
You know, it's thousands and thousands of powerful antioxidant substances found in all of the colorful fruits and vegetables, and this is the key here. It's all of those plant nutrients working together synergistically the way Mother Nature intended them to to be effective in reducing oxidative stress uh, and free radical damage. So again, we're born with this internal enzyme cascade, but that system has to be fortified. And again, you fortify it through your diets. So the question then is, you know, how many fruits and vegetables should we be getting? And the current, based on the most current epidemiological and observation studies, it's recommended that we should be consuming seven to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables every single day. And again, um, that's every single day. That's not getting that much in your diet Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay, that's seven days a week. And doing some research on this a few years ago blew me away. That They now suggest that uh, individuals who approximate or exercise vigorously or approximate up to 60 to 90 minutes of physical activity on a fairly regular basis, well, you should be consuming somewhere in the order of 16 to 18 servings of fruits and vegetables. Um, you know, trying to get that amount, let alone just the 7 to 13 servings every single day, and of the variety of colors, that rainbow of colors, uh, again, for almost every single one of us, unless you can get that in your diet seven days a week, uh, for almost every single one of us, there is going to exist some form of a gap in our nutrition. And the traditional way that people have been filling this nutritional gap has been through supplementation, and specifically supplementation with vitamins, minerals, herbs, uh, you name it. And again, you know, there's a plethora of supplements on the market today. It's so very, very confusing. But if you look at the research, it's really quite astounding because they're finding that study after study after study is showing that athletes that take these synthetic isolated vitamins like vitamin C or vitamin E and or multivitamins, those, suppl those supplements are actually doing more harm than good. And in fact, this, this was a huge study published in two, late 2011 where it was a systematic review of the literature on vitamin supplementation and exercise performance. It was done by a couple of New Zealand researchers. And they looked at over 100 studies and they, they narrowed it down to about 30 to 40 well-designed randomized controlled trials. And what they found when they parsed through these you know, thousands of pages of data was, and this was their statement and their conclusion, was that, quote, a growing body of evidence indicates detrimental effects, not just you know, neutral effects, but actual detrimental effects of vitamin supplementation on the health and performance benefits of exercise training. And you know, I know that this sounds so counterintuitive because just looking at the word vitamin looks like it should be healthy for you. Uh, but you know, we're finding that vitamin supplementation is not what we thought it was. You know, for the most part in this country, we do not have uh, you know, vitamin deficiencies anymore. What we really have are whole food deficiencies. And, and these researchers you know, summed it up at, at the very last paragraph this is what they said, looking at all the data, is, quote, a variety of fruits and vegetables remains the best nutritional approach to maintain, this is the key, to maintain optimal antioxidant status. Uh, again, so you see athletes who are so tied to their vitamin supplements, uh, you really, based on all of the research now, you really have to ask the question why. And so the bottom line is, is that, you know, because so many of us do have a nutritional gap, the best way to fill that nutritional gap is through food and through whole raw food uh, where you get your vitamins and minerals, but you're getting them in their natural form, not enough synthetic fractionated form, but with the added benefit of all those other phytonutrients and plant nutrients and chemicals that scientists really are still naming and identifying. The key here is everything is working together synergistically, uh, yeah, again, the way Mother Nature intended them to, versus trying to bridge the, the gap, the nutritional gap, with what I call no food sources, which are, again are the isolated fragmented laboratory-made vitamins, you know, and or multivitamins that simply lack that powerful synergy. And so this is the product I recommend. I've been taking this now for over eight years. Uh, it's been on the market now for 20 years. And I recommend this product to bridge the nutritional gap because it's food, it's whole raw food, and the product is Juice Plus. And the reason why I really uh, love this product is because of the research that's done on it. Uh, it is the most thoroughly researched brand name nutritional product available to in the world bar none. And basically it's 26 different fruits, veggies, berries, and grains that are in capsules. You can think of it like a salad bar in a capsule. You know, they have extracted the water, they've taken the entire fruit and vegetable ground up, and that includes the skin. You know, we're, there's a lot of health benefits in the skin itself, and they've ground it up and taken the water and the fiber and, and sugar bind together and, and they've dehydrated it and and 
put them in capsules. And so basically, you know, a lot of people think it's a vitamin. It's far from a vitamin. You're getting food. You're getting a whole raw food. You're getting your vitamins and minerals, again, but in their natural form, the way our bodies recognize them, you know, from apples and oranges and beets and cranberries and parsley, all those good things are condensed into capsules. And it's very, very powerful. So as I mentioned, the product has years and years of research, 18 years of research now, uh, and still ongoing, 30, over 30 at this point, uh, the time of this webinar, over 30 plus published studies in peer-reviewed journals, and that's key. So there are numerous studies that are done on Juice Plus and exercise-induced oxidative stress. So how do we neutralize the oxidative stress that occurs when we exercise? And again, this product has been studied. Uh, and so what I want to do is just finish up by going through uh, one of the studies that I think had a huge impact on me as, uh, as a physician and an athlete. In this particular study, they found that Juice Plus helped to reduce permanent oxidation or damage to proteins during intense exercise, and this is the key, allowing the body to adapt to the benefits of exercise without long-term damage to proteins. And this was a gold standard study, which is randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study. It appeared in and was published in My Sports Medicine Journal, which is the official journal of the American College of Sports Medicine. Okay, that, that is, it's called Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise. That's a top journal in the world. And so what I want to do is, is break this study down because it's, it's pretty complex. Um, but it is very impactful when you hear the results. And so in this study, there were two groups of athletes. One group that exercised at 70% VO2 max, which is exercising hard. And then another group that exercised at 80% VO2 max, which is really hard. That's like if you're on a treadmill running and you cannot talk to the person next to you. And so what I want to focus in on is the 80% VO2 max group because both groups had similar results, but it makes the explanation a little bit easier in the bar graphs. And so in this 80% VO2 max, there are two groups that they subdivided them into. One group that took Juice Plus, the JPC capsules, and then another group that took the dummy pill or the placebo. And what they did is this was a 28-week study. In the, the researchers exercised these athletes four different times during this 28-week study. They exercised them at baseline before they even started supplementation. Then they exercised them at four weeks after supplementation began, and then again at 16 weeks, and then again in the final 28-week period. And at each of those exercise sessions, the, the, the researchers drew blood on these athletes. They drew blood before they exercised, immediately after they exercised, then at 30 minutes after the exercise session was done, and then again at 30 hours after the exercise session. And what the researchers wanted to know is, hey, what kind of protein damage, what kind of protein oxidation is occurring in these athletes' bodies as a function of them exercising at each of these exercise sessions? And so I'm going to show you a couple of bar graphs. Um, and, and the first bar graph on the left is, is what happened at baseline before these athletes even started supplementation. Again, there were two groups, the placebo group depicted in the red bar and then juice plus group depicted in the green bars. And on the vertical axis is the amount of protein oxidation, the amount of protein damage that is occurring in these athletes' bodies. That can be measured in their bloodstream. There's something called protein carbonyls. That's the byproduct of protein damage that can be measured in the blood. And then on the horizontal axis, the, the, the base axis is where they drew blood before they exercised immediately after 30 minutes and then 30 hours. And so they, this is before uh, baseline, or this is before they started supplementation. So they exercise these athletes. They had a predictable rise, both groups, in, of protein damage as a function of them exercising during the session that, that was elevated immediately after they exercised, was sustained 30 minutes after they exercised, and then 30 hours later, they came back down to normal. The body was able to synthesize that protein damage. Now, I want to fast forward you to the final 28-week period, and you're going to see quite a radical departure from that baseline period. So this is significant because... Um, what they found was that the athletes that were not taking Juice Plus had a significant elevation, as you can see, a significant elevation in damaged or oxidized proteins inside of their bodies. And that's compared to the Juice Plus group that had no elevation of these oxidized or damaged proteins. But what I think is really significant is, is take a look at the amount of protein damage in pro oxidized proteins that are already circulating around in their bodies compared to what it was at baseline. You can see that there was this gradual accumulation of these oxidized or damaged proteins. And what this shows, and this is significant, is that again, we talked about how we're all born with this, this enzyme cascade that acts as a frontline defense system against free radicals. 
Well, as you can see, if you're not putting micronutrients, specifically from fruits and vegetables, and, and in the study from Juice Plus, if you're not putting micronutrients into that system, as you will see over a period of time, that system, that innate system we have, begins to fail because there was an accumulation of these oxidized proteins in these athletes' bodies that were not taking Juice Plus. But that's compared to individuals who are taking Juice Plus. And if you do put micronutrients into that system we're born with, as you can see, it functions quite properly. There is not an accumulation of these oxidized proteins. And the reason all that's important is because study after study after study in the last several years, they're now making the link between this accumulation of these oxidized proteins to overtraining and overreaching syndromes in athletes. So you see athletes, and this again, this could be little Johnny going off to soccer, all the way up to the elite professional athlete that start off a season healthy. But as that season progresses, they start to get more and more sore, more and more tired, more and more sick, more and more injured. Well, they have now made this link to this accumulation of these oxidized protein. They've now made that link to, to these particular issues that athletes are having. Again, we're talking about trying to sustain your athletic ability day in, day out, year after year after year. Um, and I had a personal experience with this. This is a picture of me finishing uh, at the Ironman World Championships in Kona back in 2005. And prior to this, uh, the year before uh, I did this, I did Ironman Florida, and I had a miserable race. I was uh, basically fatigued and tired going into the race itself, which, of course, now I understand um, was because I had all this accumulation of these oxidized proteins inside my body from all the training I was doing trying to prepare for the race. Subsequently, I had a horrible race. Uh, you know, was, was so sore I couldn't walk for two, three days after the race. And for about you know three, four, five weeks after the race, I was constantly sick with one cough, one cold, one upper respiratory infection. Basically, my body was trashed, and I hate to admit it, but at that time I was taking eight vitamin, mineral, and herbal supplements. It obviously wasn't doing anything for me. Certainly now, based on the research I know today, we're probably doing more harm than good. But I, I started taking Juice Plus before I started training and racing for, um, or before I started training and preparing for Ironman uh, Hawaii. And you know, I was already eating a good diet. I was already eating a diet that was rich in fruits and vegetables. And, and I really had a hard time thinking that something, that fruits and vegetables and capsules was going to be beneficial to me. But you know, I, I trained really hard for this race, and I was putting six to eight hours a day of training, and I knew my body very, very well, and not right away, but about two to three months into taking Juice Plus, I did notice some subtle kind of anecdotal, you know, testimonial things that were happening to my physiology, and all my years of training and racing, I'd never noticed before as a collegiate swimmer and triathlete. You know, I was having a lot less muscle and joint pain. I was having, I was recovering a lot quicker between my training and racing sessions, and the other thing I noticed is I wasn't getting sick. I wasn't getting the coughs or the colds. And it was very interesting that all my training partners who were not taking Juice Plus, and I was, they were still struggling with all those things. So, um, you know, I knew there was something going on, and that's with, to my physiology, and that's when I decided to look at the research on it. And again, at that time, two of the studies on Juice Plus were published in my sports medicine journal, which is, you know, one of the most renowned sports journals in the world. That was it for me. Um, the light bulb went on. It's never gone out. Um, and I think that this really cinched it as well, too, is that Juice Plus was the official nutritional support for the entire Austrian, German, and Swiss Olympic teams through the 2012 London Games. You know, the, they got the research. They understood the benefits to their athletes, which is why they, they had all of their, their athletes, their coaches, their personal trainers all taking Juice Plus because they knew of the health benefits that it would afford to them. And just a couple of... Um, um, other stories that go along with this, uh, Ariana Kukors uh, is, is you know world record holder in the 200 individual medley. And her mother came to hear me speak on this subject back in 2009. Uh, Ariana tr attempted to make the Olympic team back in 2008 and was on her way to doing it, but ended up getting sick in, from all the training and racing and didn't qualify. So her mother came and heard me speak out in Seattle uh, back in 2009 and approached me after she heard this lecture and said, gee, do you think this is something Ariana you know, should be taking? Of course, absolutely, uh, knowing what I knew about oxidative stress in the athlete. And so she started supplementing with Juice Plus, and sure enough, you know, she didn't train anything. I mean, she didn't change anything else. She just added the micronutrients that she was lacking in her diet. And sure enough, she qualified for the London Games in 2012, ended up setting you know, world record uh, along the way. So... Um, you know, she's, she really is a great example of what happens when you put these nutrients into your body. Jason Fowler, 
Uh, also 2009 Ironman World Champion in the Hand Cycle Division. Uh, we got Jason started on Juice Plus back in 2007, and, and he's just uh, really going gangbusters. And this is a guy who's very, very tuned to, to what he's putting inside of his body. And of course, you know, Bear Grylls has been a big Juice Plus person for years. He started way back when he was an Army Ranger. And, um, you know, many of you have seen Bear on TV. Uh, he's actually the first or the youngest individual to get to the top of Mount Everest. And, you know, when you're climbing, you're doing that kind of strenuous activity. You don't have a lot of, you don't have a lot of places to put food. I mean, you have to be very smart about what you're putting inside your body. And he, Juice Plus was absolutely something he knew that he needed. And unsolicited, as you can see in the upper left-hand side, when he got to the top, that he held up that Juice Plus um, sign in because he knew that that was part of what got him there. So, in the other thing to understand here, because you know they're both, I lecture to both collegiate and professional athletes. Juice Plus is also NSF certified for sport, which is an additional screening that's necessary for any athlete at a collegiate or professional level to be able to take a supplement and has to carry this certification. Uh, to ensure that you know an athlete's bot or an athlete's uh, is not going to have contaminated urine, they're not going to get contaminants, and that's something that you typically do not see in you know general vitamin stores. You know you don't see this kind of additional certification. It's not a cheap certification, but you know you constantly hear of professional athletes that end up having contaminated uh, urine on drug tests because they were taking a supplement that you know wasn't certified. Uh, by these particular um, bodies that, uh, you know, the NFL, the NCAA, uh, World Anti-Doping Agency. So Juice Plus does carry the certification. So an athlete can take Juice Plus and know not only are they going to get the health benefits from it, but that they're also not going to have an issue passing uh, drug screens. So what we've talked about, and I hope you understand that, you know, basic normal daily metabolism produces free radicals, you know, as we just breathe in oxygen normally. And that when you exercise at any level, uh, you're going to increase that free radical load. We know that. And, and if free radicals are not effectively neutralized, they can lead to accelerated aging. They can lead to, di to disease processes. And as you've just seen, can lead to poor athletic performance. And the most effective way in neutralizing free radicals, we know, is through the consumption of antioxidants. But antioxidants from fruits and vegetables and not synthetic, isolated, laboratory-made vitamins that, again, we see on counters today. But because, again, it's so difficult to get that minimum 7 to 13 servings, let alone trying to get 16 to 18 servings of fruits and vegetables. And the key is not just the quantity. It's also that rainbow of colors, the distribution and the synergy of those rainbow of colors. For almost, again, every single one of us, there's going to exist some form of a gap in our nutrition. And that's why I just absolutely love this product um, because you know it bridges that nutritional gap. And it's based on solid, sound research. And that's why I strongly recommend any athlete at any level, at any age, um, should be taking Juice Plus because, again, your performance deserves protection. We're not talking about a miracle bullet here. We're talking about uh, your ability to sustain your performance day in, day out, year after year um, after year. And that's, again, why I love this product. And so I hope that, you know, this made sense to you. This is this is pretty impactful information. And, again, I was I've been researching this now for several, several years. Um, if you would like the citations on the references to everything I talked about, because it's all based on research and not my conjecture or my opinion. Okay, this is sound science. Uh, if you like the resources, um, I can get those to you. And uh, I do appreciate you taking time to hear this. And uh, have a good day and train hard and, and protect yourself.